Mason today with Swamrat Not Cameras. He's a 57 year old female, and uh, we did a CT scan on Swamrat Not Cameras, and then uh, we posted the patient for a digital subtraction angiogram, suspecting uh, aneurysm in the right middle cervical artery bifurcation. So we started with an angiogram of the right internal carotid artery, which is uh, demonstrating there is a wide neck aneurysm on the right MC bifurcation. We will go closely and uh, we will see from different angle uh, the anatomy as well as uh, the different vessel related to the aneurysm and we will plan for the treatment and execute it also. So this is the epicranial view where we can see the aneurysm and uh, both the branches, M2 branches are coming through the aneurysm so we do have to uh, reconstruct this aneurysm for a better treatment and a long term program which can tell us more about the anatomy of this vessel and uh, this is the MCM1 and uh, that is ending all the way into the aneurysm and uh, we can see that this is the major branch which is coming all the way from the aneurysm and this is another branch which is uh, more or less dependent on the aneurysm. So our idea will be to, to reconstruct this aneurysm and uh, and uh, we will go from this middle side of blood to M1 and put a stent across this uh, dominant branch and try to protect this branch through the same stent and we'll go across into the stent and enter the aneurysm and try to coil it. This will be the plan to handle this. Which is uh, going all the way from the M1 into the aneurysm and our target here is to go to the inferior dominant branch. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, we are able to go. This is a pair of Synchro and SL10 from the Striker Neurovascular. And uh, we are making a steady progress with the wire in a very stable position of the microcatheter into the dominant inferior branch. Yes. And we have taken a very we are we have taken a neuro from Atlas and deployed the stent from the M2 across the aneurysm and into the M1. So nicely covered the M1 and the inferior branch of the M2 with the aneurysm. And then we start putting coils into the aneurysm. We have protected uh, the dominant branch and the other branch is protected with the stent as it is uh, some start of the stent is protecting to prevent any kind of coil prolapse into the superior M2 as well. And then we progressively coiled uh, the aneurysm with a stent across and, and could completely exclude this aneurysm from the circulation with a stent across protecting the M2 on uh, the superior as well as uh, inferior side. And this is the final angiogram demonstrating complete exclusion of the aneurysm from the circulation with both M2 being patent. So that shows the successful coiling of this wide neck right MC bifurcation aneurysm, which was acutely ruptured, but we had to put a stand because we didn't have any other good option over here as a surgically unfit patient and we got, a, we got a fantastic result at the end. Whenever you are dealing with an acute subarachnoid hemorrhage patient with an intracranial aneurysm which is ruptured, we try to do aneurysm coiling, balloon assisted coiling, but try to avoid a stent. Because to put a stent, we need to put the patient on double antiplatelet. And in some, some section of patients of acute subarachnoid hemorrhage, they may experience vasospasm or hydrocephalus which may need surgical intervention. So when a patient is on double antiplatelet and need a surgical intervention for hydrocephalus or vasospasm, it could be challenging. So we try to avoid putting a stent and double antiplatelet. But in some situation like this case today, it is, you know, probably we don't have any other good option when the patient is surgically unfit and the aneurysm is wide having a couple of brands coming out of the neck of the aneurysm, we need to protect it and uh, here we use a stent and we take all the precautions how to do it safely. 
and try not to have a complication, of course. And uh, you know, we try to keep it as simple as possible and uh, do the coiling and uh, take extreme good care that the patient doesn't develop any of the further complication. So we saw today it's a very beautifully done case. The stent going from the inferior branch, the dominant M2 to M1 across the endosome and then going inside the endosome and coiling completely excluding this endosome from circulation and hence you know this endosome has very very minimal chance that that it may ever come back 99.9 percent this is a stable and good long-term outcome as per the treatment of